Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth lab of the Kiskit Global Summer School. This lab is going to be a summary of the material that you've learned in the past two lectures, in lectures three and four, where you went all the way from understanding quantum Fourier transforms, quantum phase estimation, and then using both of these to build up Shor's algorithm. So this lab is focused on using Shor's algorithm for the specific goal of factoring a number, and you'll go through the exercise of factoring the number 15 into its factors 5 and 3. So let me begin by walking you through the lab very quickly. I will share my screen now. As always, we will begin by unzipping the, the lab 4 zip file and opening Jupyter Notebooks. I'll just drag and drop the exercise file and open it in my browser window. Now, you may notice uh, Lab 4 Shor's algorithm has similar references to yesterday. Those are Fourier transform and phase estimation. I've also included another reference for you, the Shor's algorithm section of the Kiskit textbook, which I think you'll find helpful as you work through this lab. The goal of the lab is to take you through the entire sequence of factoring 15 into its, uh, into its factors. And so the building blocks that you'll be using are effectively going to make up this block schematic that you're seeing here. So the idea here is to initialize your qubits, apply Hadamard gates onto the measurement qubits at the top, apply these modular exponentiation blocks, and in the end, uh, do an inverse quantum Fourier transform. As you might remember from the lectures, uh, this is exactly the schematic of quantum phase estimation. And so effectively what you're doing is implementing quantum phase estimation where that unitary U is interesting for a specific application here for factoring numbers. So there are four steps, as I've mentioned. We initialize our qubits, we apply the unitary, we do an inverse Fourier transform, and finally we do our measurement and do post-processing. So the goal here is to walk you through the steps. Uh, so you'll write the code to initialize the qubits. We have included code here for you that you do not need to modify for doing modular exponentiation of this form, a to the x modulo 15. Now 15 is here because this is the number that we're factoring. a is the number that is co-prime, as you've learned in the lectures, co-prime with 15. And x is the power of that modular exponentiation. So we've given you this block in order to use for your modular exponentiation building blocks, but what you will have to do is write out the sequence of how that applies in your individual circuit and target qubits. Once you do this, uh, you'll, you'll implement the inverse quantum Fourier transform just like you did yesterday. Uh, you can either do this manually by writing out the gates yourself, which is a good way to remember what the gates are, or you could use Qiskit's built-in uh, circuit library, and you can just immediately call the quantum Fourier transform object from there. A note here, if you're going to use Qiskit's built-in quantum Fourier transform object, just remember that you need to do the inverse quantum Fourier transform, which means you need to think about whether or not swaps are involved. In this case, you don't need the swap gates to be involved to do your work. Okay, and finally, we've put together a block here that, that compiles your program. So we have the initialization, we have the modular exponentiation, the inverse quantum Fourier transform, and finally the measurement. And this code calls uh, the sequence of steps with four qubits in the measurement, uh, four qubits in the target register, and the co-prime number that we're looking for in this example is seven. I would encourage you to work through different versions of uh, this problem by maybe changing A to be a different number that is co-prime with N. Uh, you might notice in the block that we've given you up here, A can be any number 2, 7, 8, 11, or 13. And depending on which value of A that you choose, you'll get different results. Now, you're graded on A equals 7. However, I would recommend trying the others just to see what the outputs are and how you can infer the factors from them. In the end, uh, I've also put in this block here that helps you see uh, what the guesses would be. Uh, doing the classical post-processing effectively from the measured numbers. Uh, so hopefully, if you have everything set up right, you should see the factors 3 and 5 coming out of this block of code. And that's it.